Ukraine's Kursk Offensive, the advance continues, uh, August 17th, 18th, 2024. This is what we will talk about today. And this picture represents Russian's Russian protest. Good Putin, lift up Russia from its knees. These people standing on their knees, literally, begging Russian authorities to return conscripts home. And to Belousov and so on, Russian authorities, to listen to them. They said, please talk to us, we exist. No, you don't. Not for Putin and his illegal Moscow regime. Hello there, I am Elina, welcome back to my channel Enough of Propaganda. Let's make truth available for everyone. I am really grateful to my subscribers and my viewers from all over the world, especially to these people who left me comments and in support, because it, mean, it means a lot to me. Lots of trolls showing up on my channel, wishing me dead and a whole bunch of other things, spreading Russian lies. So I welcome people who are actually supporting me and giving me a few kind words, because it's really tiring sometimes to do all of this. I know as Russian and Canadian citizen, I feel it's my duty to tell the truth, especially because I investigated this war for over 10 years now and really have actual facts and information to disprove Russian lies and propaganda. And we're talking about propaganda of other countries sometimes as well. But it gets really... It makes people feel really bad about when a whole bunch of Russians with brainwashed or useful idiots, but highly likely just the trolls, showing up and saying, what a bad person I am. I'm not letting Putin destroy Ukraine and kill a whole bunch of Ukrainians and Russians. What a bad person I am. Not Putin who started this aggressive war, but me. So thank you all who coming, supporting, watching and learning the truth. If it sometimes sounds in my videos that I'm talking to the trolls, because I am, and because I want that my videos will be useful to you, so you can just take a video and show it to some useful idiot. Because you can't really convince trolls, but there are people who really don't know what is happening. And these are facts and video proofs, which you can use to maybe win over some of your family members or something, or supporters of certain useful idiots in different countries who are supporting Putin. To this day, after over 10 years of the war. So I thought perhaps my videos could be useful and be useful for some of you according to your comments. So thank you all. As you know, or I presume you know, since you are on my channel, you already saw my previous videos, I believe, um, that there is a offensive, a Ukrainian offensive, which is going on in Russia, for example, in Kursk region and so on. Uh, but just in case somebody new came to the channel, and I really recommend this post by Tendar, uh, this is what he says. The Ukrainian offensive in Kursk has been ongoing for 12 days, and it's time to make an intermediate assessment of, on all levels. Spoiler. It's an Ukrainian success story. Please indulge me. So basically, uh, I actually made a summary of this post. It's a really good summary of everything. And I will decided I'll publish it in the description of the video, where I always publish sources. So, this is talking about several levels. Tactical level, operational level, strategic level, and political level. So, you will be able to see what is happening and get a good summary about it. As to the rest of us, we will move on. The Ukrainian army continues its bold advance into Russian territory, capturing up to 1,150 or even I heard up to 1,500 square kilometers. This is quite a fresh update from uh, 7 o'clock in the evening, August 18th, uh, European time. Uh, it says that Ukrainian forces are confirmed to have liberated the village of Apanasovka in Glushkovsky district of Kursk. So. Ukrainians taking huge territories in Russia. What I can say, uh, just to make a disclaimer that, please keep, it, keep in mind that everybody who is posting maps, uh, include me, 
those maps perhaps up to three days behind deep state map project as well saying that so just in case for you to know most of this information isn't up to date well, all of it basically and we don't want it to be up to date because we don't want to interfere with ukrainian offensive uh how it works for example recently russian minister of lies or let's say minister of defense uh it's just like an oral truth lie is a truth slavery freedom is slavery and so on so they posted a video a helicopter russian helicopter destroying a column and said oh we destroyed the ukrainian column turned out to be it was a russian helicopter destroying russian column so when things are foggy and uh, russians doesn't know where the enemies are it happens it happens not only in russia it happens everywhere if uh, the army doesn't know where the enemies are they often whack their own army and so and because they're thinking it's an enemy's army that is why we should keep it in the fog and don't disclose too much information whatever i'm doing in my videos is public knowledge already and russian z bloggers already know about it here's a little video of liberating of apanasovka um, Please keep in mind that over 82 Russian settlements right now under Ukrainian control. So all of this lies about that Ukrainians offensive stalled, that it's finished. This is not true. Ukraine is continuing to advance, but working in according to the old military strategies and so on. So they're trying to look after their logistics and dig in, but at the same time, they're still moving forward and faster than Russia is doing it on the Ukrainian front in Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian armed forces showed a video of the escape of Russian Marines from the battlefield. They just basically Marines unit of uh, 810th Brigade of the Russian armed forces run away, leave their position in panic and their commander is captured. So you can watch it for yourself. Fresh news are that uh, Ukrainian army destroyed the second bridge on the river same kind of encircling putin's army as you can see the still part of the bridge stand is standing but of course it's not safe to drive on it especially for tanks or anything it doesn't mean russians wouldn't try don't think russians wouldn't try to drive here this is an english uh, translation of this article in the coming days a group of russian armed forces might may find itself surrounded on the left bank on the of the same river in the kursk region According to the sources, uh, this bridge is in the uh, village Zvanne, which uh, Russian units used to supply across this bridge in the Kursk direction in the Glushkovsky district. This is video about destruction of the bridge. I won't show you much. And the end result. With the destruction of this bridge, it's uh, highly likely uh, the situation will occur that Russian army will find themselves surrounded along the way ukrainian army have taken more russian pow's and military equipment while russian forces have struggled to respond this is igor sushko he's showing how ukrainian forces captured russian newest tank t90m which entered service in 2020 i will show you somewhat of this footage and yeah this is russian tank um, as much as i know ukrainian I understood what the Ukrainian military man was saying about this tank. Actually, Ukrainians called it Pirajok, which is little pie. And they're quite happy for capturing this equipment. It sounds like Russians basically just their battery get, got dead. All they need to recharge the battery and it could be used in, in usable condition and so on. So Ukrainians are quite happy about this and laughing at Russians who abandoned decent tank just because they need to recharge the battery. So people who used this tank wasn't happy. They said you can't really turn the top of the tank, the tower, very well. You can't really use the levers to operate it and hardly you can get in and out. It's very awkward and terrible. 
so they were not happy about it. This video is about how Ukrainian forces captured in Kursk region a completely intact Russian Kamaz 53-501 tanker truck at an abandoned base and also Russian forces left behind several cases of brand new unopened Valdai PG-210 holographic sites. So this is Kamaz. And Russia just dumping in equipment and so on. This is reposted from a uh, telegram channel of Russian uh, Z bloggers. They say in the Glushkovsky district, uh, Russian forces left Glushkovsky district after the destruction of the bridges. And using derogatory language to Ukrainians, they say that Ukrainians trying to liberate Koreneva. And the road to Rilsk is wide open. And there is a possibility of surrounding thousands of Russian soldiers. They are thinking that Rilsk will be captured from both sides and they have to wait for another uh, Ukrainian invasion through the border again. They are talking about that some sort of a Ukrainian channel publishing like Ukrainians killing Russian soldiers from 155th Brigade, which yesterday killed Ukrainian uh, POW. I'll tell about it a little later. And they say, oh, terrible, they don't take in prisoners and so on, which is another Russian lie. But if Ukrainians wouldn't take prisoners from 155th Brigade, they have full reasons for that. Even this is a war crime and I'm not supporting it, but I won't blame Ukrainians because I know Ukrainians wouldn't do that. Even, be, even despite the fact that the people from that brigade literally put Ukrainians, Ukrainians POW head on a spike. What actually happened? Ukraine's initiated a war crimes investigation after a video posted on 16th of August showed what it said to be a head of Ukrainian soldier. Video was posted by and allowed a neo-Nazi unit in the Russian army. This unit called Rusich, by the way. I'll tell you about it in a minute. So basically, Russians put Ukrainian guys head on the spike. Either they executed POW and do it or they just mutilated the corpse. In either way, this is a war crime. In my playlist, important to know about the war in Ukraine. In the video, Russian and Ukrainian Nazis compared this video. I already told about that unit Rusich and the chief Milchikov, who is literally said I'm a Nazi. They did it before. They did those crimes in Syria. They did those crimes in Ukraine in 2014. And they're doing it now. Just a few hours ago, Preston Stewart published on his channel uh, the video about that Rusich unit. Uh, these guys are the worst, he's saying. And he followed, without showing graphic details at all, he's following what happened in different times and what Rusich did. And this is Milchikov, by the way, himself. Uh, neither him or me we showing anything to offend YouTube or anything. So you're welcome to watch this, and I agree with Mr. Stewart in this video, except for one thing. He is giving a doubt because he doesn't know are those units really Russian army or they kind of just are connected to the Russian army. I'm telling you that there are no private those PMC in Russia. All of them are Russian army. They're disguised as a PMC. And so was Prigozhin's Wagner. And Putin personally admitted that from the day one, Russian army, Russian government, from the taxpayers' money, were supporting and completely financing Wagner. And so is everybody else. So all these so-called PMCs, they are not PMCs, they are Russian army. And Putin confirmed that. I have the videos about Wagner on my channel where I actually showing Putin saying exact that words. But in general, this is a good video, and if you want to know about Russian Nazis, here it is. This is the video where Milchikov is saying, I'm telling you straightforward, I'm a Nazi. In 2011, Milchikov beheaded a puppy and posted it online. That is why 
he was uh, sentenced in Russia, was he was prosecuted, the law was trying to prosecute him anyways. Against him and the leaders of Rusic, uh, there are sanctions from several countries, including the United States, because of them being a Nazis and committing war crimes and crimes in different countries, including Ukraine. Don't take me wrong, all the Russian army are the Nazis. They are, should not be in Ukraine at all. But these are real, actual Nazis. Rusic and so on units. As I said, Ukrainian forces control Suja and then they find Russian ammunition and uh, this is what they found in school. What Russian stores in Ukrainian school, in, in school in Russia. And that's Ukrainians capture it and find it right in the school in Suja, Kursk region, Russian Federation. Meanwhile, Ukrainians, according to international law, are supposed to look after people on the occupied territories and they bring in water and food. Например, мы видим, как жители идут за водой, как украинский солдат, значит, делится своей едой тоже с местным населением. People are coming to get water and Ukrainian soldiers sharing his food with the locals. And people saying to the boy, say, say thank you to Ukrainian guy. And people are acting very easily around Ukrainian, Ukrainian army because Ukrainian army didn't come to kill them and torture them. Meanwhile, Ukrainians are helping people and the dogs, which Russians left on the chain, in their yards when they flee their home, because basically Russian army looting homes of Russian people in Russian Federation. So far, Ukrainian troops acted on Russian territory exceptionally well. There are no signs of huge atrocities or anything like that. If it any happened anywhere, minor cases perhaps happened somewhere, but there is no video proofs of that for now whatsoever. Except there was one stupid Ukrainian soldier who is scared this old man by putting on the old Nazi helmet and pretend to speak to this guy in German in the Senate, uh, which was stupid thing to do. I condemn it, condemn it. And Ukraine's actually apologized and they're showing that this guy is alive and well. He is actually a Ukrainian citizen as well. He showed his passport and he doesn't have any issues with this, but he was scared and this was not a good thing to do. So please, Ukrainian officers, explain your soldiers that stuff like that is just giving an ammunition to Russian propaganda. And worse of it, I am expecting uh, that a Russian army and FSB, who is in charge of that so-called counter-terrorist operation, in Russian opinion, who might commit something and blow it everywhere just to show how bad Ukraine is. This is not true. And be ready that you will see something like that happening. And I sure hope people would escape that and wouldn't be killed, Russian people, by Russian FSB, just to do a false flag operation, which Russia is famous for. Putin is famous for. It's his modus operandi. So I really encourage Russian people stay away of any military and run away as soon as you see them because you never know it could be the fsb who just decided to round you up and kill and blame it on ukraine it is possible and it happened in the past putin continues killing russians in ukraine russian losses wounded captured and dead 1170 in the last day again for the last time as i said last weeks i haven't seen a day when the losses would be less than a thousand in here. And it's almost 600. If already I heard 600,000. Only Russians. Putin killed, murdered, injured, and lost in this war. Meanwhile in Russia there is another hit on oil depot in Rostov region. The funny thing is, according to Professor Preobrazhensky, Russia is still keep trying to hide everything from Russian people. The Russian government, illegal government of Moscow, trying to hide everything. And those articles are saying, oh, it's just uh, events and so on. So that's what Preobrazhensky is saying. Let me explain. As a result of a large scale provocation during a special military operation, an emergency situation arose that required a counter terrorist operation. All of this is supposed to be called events that happened. What isn't clear? Several sources are saying that uh, Ukraine, 
uh, took about 2,000 Russian POWs. Many of them are conscripts, by the way. And the Independent, for example, confirmed that, and so on. Uh, minimum 250 of those 2,000 are conscripts, uh, according to the Washington Post. Meanwhile, Putin is conscripting people uh, from all over Russia, Irkutsk region, Tumensk region, Samara, Belgorod region, Moscow region and Moscow, Leningrad region, it's where St. Petersburg is, Kaliningrad region, Murmansk region, even Latvia or somebody from the Baltic countries, uh, leader of the, one of the Baltic countries reported that Russia taking troops from Kaliningrad region, which is the border with also scary NATO. And these people were thrown into the Kursk region. So people should apply to Edith Lesum or go by the forest, which is one of the sources and so on, and different sources trying to, uh, if they want to save their sons, who is uh, conscripts and will be sent to Kursk region. There are people who are helping those people to escape Russian army and so on and give themselves up to Ukraine or something like that. If you want them alive, then you should apply to these organizations and try to help them before they get killed in Kursk region. We finally found the Kadyrov forces, the TikTok warriors, Kadyrovci. Instead of fighting with armed forces of Ukraine and defending Russian land, they robbed a communication shop in the Kursk region and were caught on video. So Kadyrov, Kadyrov forces Ahmad that's what they get. They, they are doing. There is an article about it and there are videos when they are looting the store, basically. That's what they're doing on Russian territory, a Russian store. Uh, at first, Russian propaganda was trying to make it about Ukrainians, but turned out to be, they were recognized as Chechens, Kadyrovci from Chechnya and so on. And now Russians trying to say, oh, we're going to prosecute everybody. Yeah, good luck with that idea. They were looting in Ukraine and they are looting in Russia. Meanwhile, anti-war Russians held a meeting in uh, South Korea and they say in Kursk, this is Ukraine. Putin is a killer. I agree with them. Lenin meets Ukrainian troops in Kul Kursk region. This is a monument of Lenin. Deserve to be destroyed. This is what will happen to Putin, I hope, and soon. According to this Telegram channel, in the last 24 hours, six more settlements have fallen in Russia. And Ukrainian forces are ripping through Russian defenses. And that's what he suggested to Russian people. Your options are simple to Russian army. Surrender or be wiped out. This is not about Kursk. This is in Ukraine happening. The One of the column was destroyed near Pokrovsk, Russian convoy in Pokrovsk was destroyed today using drones. I hope someday my country Russia will stand up from its knees and throw Putin's regime and Putin himself into the garbage. And Russia will become free, independent country, non-imperialistic, who is not attacking not just neighbors, but anyone. And Russia will build them itself a good life, like Canada. I sure hope someday it will happen. Not much hope at this day, but in the future, I still hope. And thank you for watching, learn the truth, and stay informed. This is the end of the update for today. See you soon.